In order to keep pace in a loaded Big 12, Arizona is going to have to address a certain amount of issues. You are Locked On Wildcats. Your daily podcast on the Arizona Wildcats. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Thanks for making Locked On Wildcats your first listen of the day. I am your host, Mike Luke. All right, we have got a lot to get to this show. We are going to talk uh, pretty much all Arizona basketball. We might talk a little bit of Arizona football if the opportunity arises. But first, all right, we are uh, Arizona has to get difference makers in the portal. And here's kind of where I'm at with things. Yes, yes, I understand. That shooting is paramount in basketball. I understand that. Understand that. But I think people also look at it and under and don't quite get that the college game, or at least in my opinion, the college game and the NBA game are two different animals entirely. You have to be able to shoot in the NBA. Period. If you can't shoot, then you're going to have some problems. Um, but. In college, to me, it is far more important to be able to have bucket getters, to be able to have guys who can get into the paint, can stress defenses, and cause problems. You look at the best teams out there, and they're not necessarily killing you from three-point range, although it does help. They are generally ones that play really, really, really good defense and own the paint. Look at UConn, for example. But... So that being said, Arizona has to be able to get guys, in my opinion, that can get make plays off the bounce. And yes, while shooters are good, you need to remember this, though. Arizona had three or four guys this past year that flirted with, you know, shooting 40 percent from three point range. But these are. These are these were okay shooters. These were kind of fake, really good shooters. Like, I'll give you an example. Pella is a good shooter. Pella was never going to be a zone buster. But if you were just to look at his uh, three point uh, percentages on paper, you'd say, "Well, that's a zone buster. He's shooting forty two percent from three point range, et cetera, et cetera." But teams weren't really worried about Pella busting a uh, busting a zone just the way it was. Keisha Johnson. Now, now Keisha, do his credit. Much, much kudos to Keyshot because, again, this is a guy that shot 38% from three. But, again, nobody was really worried about Keyshot Johnson busting you from three-point range. And, you know, if Keyshot Johnson made four or out of ten free th- or three-pointers, then go with God at that point. That's where, uh, you know, that's just kind of the way it is. Same with Kylan. Kylan shot 38%, but I don't know that anybody was really scared of Kylan Boswell raining three-pointers on you. So, again, you can't just go by percentages. Listen, if there's somebody like a Salim Stoudemire that wants, a, you know, somebody that is actually an awesome shooter, yes, you will take that. But generally, those guys aren't really out there. So, again, just because somebody looks like they, they're they a good three-point shooter on paper, you have to really kind of take into the specifics of what exactly they are all about. Now. I say that so I can tell you this. We're going to start talking about some transfer portal options. Here's the three. Th- here's the things, though, that Arizona fans need to know. That Ariz- the Arizona is going to prioritize an athletic, rangy power forward. And again, I realize I'm going to speak out of both sides of my mouth as I make the case later on in the show for somebody else. But, you know, somebody that, um, because again, up front, you've got three centers in, in uh, excuse me, in, um, uh, Henry Vasar, Dylan Anderson, Dylan's going to probably be more of a stretch four and then Mount Crevis. But you've also got at that power forward spot, you've got, you don't really have a ton of athleticism and none of those guys up front are great athletes. Now, Emmanuel Steven is p- coming in. A lot of people are saying, you know, Emmanuel Steven, Emmanuel Steven, in my opinion, and again, I would love to be wrong on this. I don't believe Emmanuel Steven will be able to really contribute a ton this coming year, especially in the Big 12 when you're going against monsters at all these different positions. I would love to see it. I just do not see it happening. So be that as it may. Um, so those are kind of what you're looking for. That's kind of what you, where you're at. Now, on the perimeter, as far as, uh, as, far as uh, players that can make plays off the bounce, one thing that I think that we do need to talk about a little bit is – Jane Bradley. Again, that's why I'm a big fan of Jane Bradley and what he could do for Arizona because Jane Bradley is 
Jaden Bradley can just Jaden Bradley can get into the paint. Jaden Bradley can stress a defense, and not only can Jaden Bradley stress a defense, Jaden Bradley is also the dude who you saw he wants the moment. He not only does he want the not only does he want the moment, he's the dude who basically when everybody else was just kind of looking around, Jaden was like, "Give me the ball, I'll get into the paint." And you saw it; he was able to take uh, he was able to take advantage of it. I think a lot of times people are. I think a lot of times people make the case that, um, you know, well, well, you know, the Clemson, they sagged off. Arizona had to be able to shoot the three or had to shoot the three. Well, tell that to Jaden Bradley. Jaden Bradley. Now, granted, Jaden Bradley did make big three, but Jaden Bradley was still able to get downhill and get to the bucket. So, again, I'm a big fan of Jaden Bradley and what he could possibly do for the University of Arizona this coming year. And I think that he is going to be someone that can kind of live at the free throw line. I think he can get you six to seven free throws per game. and then. I also think with, uh, on top of that, I also think that uh, you're also looking at somebody like a, a, a KJ Lewis. I need KJ Lewis to get about six to eight free throw attempts per game. There's uh, no reason he can't. He's a, uh, he's a dynamic finisher. He can get to the bucket and I think he is just going to be problems. So between both those players, I'd like to see 12 free throw attempts per game. I don't think that's asking a ton and keep in mind, this is going with uh, you've had point guards the last three years at Arizona starting point guards that just couldn't get to the rim, that just couldn't get to the bucket. And uh, and I think it showed, you know, Kylan Boswell attempted one free throw per game this year. That is, uh, you know, just a point guard spot. That's just not good enough. You got to be able to get guys that I think, you know, can really do that. Now, some of the other players then uh, coming in. You know, a Jamari Phillips. I like Jamari a lot. Um, the, like I said, the, the issue with Jamari is Jamari hasn't played a ton of high school uh, basketball the past year, but I think he's somebody that can get you at all three levels. And he's got a little bit of a, you know, he's got a little bit of a chip on his shoulder. I very much like uh, Jamari Phillips, and I think that he's going to be very good for what Arizona wants to do. I just don't know what kind of impact he's going to be able to have immediately. Now, maybe he will be able to have an Im immediate impact. I don't know. It's just hard when you haven't played a ton of high school basketball you know, this past year, but those are, you know, the two, those two guys in uh, Jaden Brad or uh, Jaden Bradley and KJ Lewis, those are your building blocks. In my opinion, those are the two dudes who are, who are, I think just kind of ready to be able to just do what they need to be able to do for you. Now you're going to have to obviously get some more players in there. And again, I understand shooting is big, but we've also seen shooting come and go. Arizona on paper was a good three-point shooting team this past uh, these past couple of years, or a decent three-point shooting team, and it all went away. Again, you got to have really pure shooters in that regard, and Arizona did not necessarily have that. We are going to talk about some of the players, though, that I think would be very nice fits for Arizona. But first, Robin Hood. All right, here's the deal with Robin Hood, everybody. Every, you know, listen, a lot of times with a lot of times retirement is a lot sooner than a lot of people think it is going to be. Robin Hood is here to help you again with Robin Hood. But you can get started at robinhood.com slash boost. And again, this is, uh, you know, with the, in this day and age, you know, with the financial markets, the way that, you know, it can all be kind of uh, up in the air, how everything is going to work. Robin Hood is here to give you a little bit of a sense of uh, a sense of calm. How about that? And how things can work, because, again, it's kind of it can be kind of scary in this day and age. You don't know exactly what to really expect. And Robin Hood says, do not worry about it. We will take care of it for you. We will help you. So, again, um, Robin Hood retirement. And there's a reason a lot of people are using it. Again, get started at Robinhood.com slash boost. Thanks for keeping it locked on, Wildcats, and making this your first listen of the day. I am your host, Mike Luke. All right, now, let's talk some names. First and foremost, P.J. Haggerty. I would kill to have P.J. Haggerty. Well, I don't know what kill, but I would love to have P.J. Ha Haggerty at uh, Arizona. Now, you might say, Mike, who's P.J. Haggerty? Well, thanks for asking. P.J. Haggerty is a very good basketball player from Tulsa. What I'm amazed by with P.J. Haggerty is – that he averaged almost 10 free throw attempts per game last year. That is wild. That is also amazing. PJ Haggerty is PJ Haggerty is a dude who I think at this stage in the game, it's fair to say Arizona could use a ton of, and not only could Arizona use a ton of PJ Haggerty's, they could use a ton of guys that just have that mentality. Now with, with uh, PJ Haggerty, 
here's a couple things where I think you got to keep an eye on is there's a there's still too many guards on the Arizona roster. Haggerty's probably not coming here. Boswell and Bradley are here. Um, I don't uh, know really what else way to put it, but if you if it came down to that, uh, you know, Boswell or Haggerty, I would certainly like to have Haggerty. Haggerty is aggressive, and you watch him. He can get to where he needs to on the court. Doesn't shoot a ton. I get it. But I'm also at the stage, too, where I don't really – I don't really care a ton about, um, I don't, again, I want shooters, but I don't really care a ton. I think people get caught up. This isn't the NBA Haggerty with Jaden Bradley and KJ Lewis, I think would be able to cause a lot of problems. And he also, he's, he's pretty efficient. He just knows how to play basketball. You need dudes like him come March. You need dudes like him come March. You need bucket getters. You need players. Like I said, Jaden Bradley did not have a problem when the game slowed down. And so you need players like that that can, you know, stress a defense. If you had a starting perimeter of something like uh, Jaden Bradley, P.J. Haggerty, and K.J. Lewis with, you know, Joson Sainon coming off the bench, uh, yes, please, thank you, sign me up. We will see you. Uh, we will see you during the regular season. I would love to see that, and I think that Lloyd would be able to figure that out in more ways than one. Just a really, like I said, just a really, really good player and somebody that I think would fit in very, very well at the U of A. I think he and Jane Bradley could play off of each other very well. Big, like I said, big fan of the possibility of those guys playing together. Then another one that uh, a lot of people have been asking about, and we'll throw it out there, Jordan Pope. Jordan Pope's a solid, solid basketball player. There is uh, nothing wrong with Jordan Pope. We've watched him at Oregon State. He's good. Jordan Pope also wants to play point. He's played point almost his whole life. He wants to play point. So if he comes here, it's going to have to be kind of a two-point guard system. And again, Jaden Bradley needs to be here by, uh, in my opinion, Jaden Bradley needs to be here. And there are really uh, there are no ifs, ands, or buts about it. I need Bradley here. And uh, Brad, if Bradley's here and then you got Pope, then, or, you know, Jordan Pope, cool with it. But I'd, I would prefer P.J. Haggerty. I think he's a little bit better. I think that he's a little bit better of a fit. But there's going to be a lot of people that are looking for P.J. Haggerty. Um, and that's something that you got to keep an eye on. But, again, that's still what I'm looking for, though. I think you got three out of the four spots already spoken for. You got to be able to get another bucket getter. And I get, and listen, you're, you're going to have a limited amount of scholarship spaces at this point, too. You're also going to probably, if you can find a pure shooter, cool. I will take the pure shooter. But I need, uh, like I said, need bucket getters. So that also brings me, that also brings me to the uh, the front court. Now, again, I realize that I'm speaking out of both sides of my mouth, but I'm always all over the place anyway, so I have no problem speaking out of both sides of my mouth. Uh, Trey Townsend. Trey Townsend is not a... Trey Townsend is not an uber athletic power forward kid from Oakland, but here is what I do know about Trey Townsend is that Trey Townsend can get buckets against the best teams, the most athletic teams in the country. That's another thing that Arizona 1000% needs. And not only is it something that Arizona 1000% needs, he is somebody that, uh, he is somebody that, um, you know, again, was just really, really good in big moments. Not was not only was he really, really good in big moments, he was also the guy who was able to, he was also the guy who was able to, you know, in the NCAA tournament when the chips were all down against two really, really good teams, Kentucky, and then, excuse me, after that, again, you know, and against NC State, you know, he, he was able to get it. 30, you know, dropping 30 points, getting 10 rebounds. Now, listen, is he a great defender? The numbers don't indicate that. I get it. But I'm also still more at the point now where I need bucket getters. And that is, uh, that's kind of where I am at. So I would gla gladly take him. Now, the thing that is interesting about this transfer uh, portal market right now is that there are not a ton of great options at that power forward position. There is not a, or now listen, you're, you're certainly hoping that other, uh, you know, that other things can come open. And if other uh, other options become open, yes, you will take them. But there are not a ton of great options at this stage. So you certainly need, if you're Arizona, you certainly need to be able to continue to keep a, a very close eye on things. Now, again, Dylan, I think what will help Arizona, 
at that power forward spot is you're going to be a little bit taller. You're going to have players like, you know, again, you're going to have a Mount Crevis who's 7'2". You're going to have a Henry coming off the bench who's 7 foot. You're going to have a Dylan Anderson at 6'10". So a lot of times when you have really big size, that can negate some of it. And, you know, these aren't terrible athletes. They're just not next level type athletes. You need kind of a game changer athlete. I get it. And but Trey Townsend is certainly somebody that I would keep a very uh, that I would keep a close eye on. I would be very interested as well. But we're going to keep seeing more. We're going to keep seeing more names. And but again, in this day and age in college basketball, the transfer portal market is absolutely huge. And not only is the transfer portal market absolutely huge, you know, you still have the COVID year. And I think that's why John Calipari can load up with as many five star kids as he wants, five star 18 year olds. But they're also probably going to still get the business done to him by Oakland, because that's just what happens when you've got players that. When you got players that can, uh, you know, that are 23, 24 years old and they're going against an 18 year old. I don't care if the 18 year old in four years is going to be Shea Gilgis Alexander. He's not Shea Gilgis Alexander right now. So that's again, that's something that I think you need to keep in mind. So the transfer portal market, especially for this next year or two, is going to be vital for good teams to be able to take advantage of. And I think that's something with uh I think that's something with Arizona that uh, they should be able to take advantage of as well. But you got to get difference makers, though. You've already kind of, and again, I don't want to say run off, but, you know, with a Philly B and a Paulius Morauskas, these are also players that you um, you need to, uh, you need, like I said, you need to kind of take with a grain of salt with some of the international players at this point because, um, listen, and we're going to, well, we'll just talk about it now. With the international players, it just kind of is a uh, – it's – it's. listen, Tommy Lloyd's not exactly hit, hitting the ball out of the park on this. I like Crevis. I think Crevis is going to be good. But Adama Ball didn't work out here. Uh, Philly B didn't work out here. Paulius Morauskas didn't work out here. Henry Vasar so far hasn't worked out here. Conrad Martinez probably not going to play a ton of minutes here as well. So, you know, just – with, with players like this, I think that you just kind of need to be able to slow the roll a little bit because they you just don't you just don't know. Now again, some of these guys could turn out to be pretty good, but so far it's not been a terribly good track record. But either way, I got a lot of faith in Tommy Lloyd to be able to get this one. Um, listen, we've talked about it, and I know there's somebody in the comments that doesn't like it. To me, big part of this is just accountability going forward, getting the right roster pieces, and just being able to, you know, when you need to, to be tough on your players. Because, again, sometimes there's nothing wrong with tough love. And with tough love, sometimes that's uh, something that uh, a lot of players just need. And, honestly, I think that's probably something that Arizona needs as well. So that's kind of where Arizona is right now. I, I would imagine we're going to have more movement here because, again, you're not going to – I don't believe that this roster is to, is set as far as the players coming back. I think there's still going to be a player or two that's going to be uh, moving on, and but we will certainly uh, keep an eye on that. Now, wanted to be able to touch on a little bit of football as well because we are a football school as well. But first, game time. All right, now. Let's say that you, uh, you want to go to a game and you don't know exactly where to uh, you know, get tickets and say the ticket office is closed or they're uh, causing your, they're pricing you too high. Go to Game Time. Download the Game Time app today. Use code Locked On College for twenty dollars off. Twenty dollars off, my friends, and you will get uh, you can and get the Game Time app now. Listen, we know I know a lot of people that have used Game Time not only for uh, sporting events but have used them for rock concerts. I mean, come on. You can use it for that. This is kind of your one-stop shop Game Time. Check it out. Download the Game Time app today. Use code Locked On College for $20 off. $20 off, my friends. That is a very, very good deal. And like I said, not just limited to uh, not just limited to uh, sporting of era to sporting events, you can do all kinds of different things as well. Again, check it out. Game time, download the game time app today. Use code locked on for $20 off. Thanks for keeping it locked on, Wildcats. I'm your host, Mike Luke. All right, now we've talked a lot of Arizona basketball this show. Wanted to talk a little bit of Arizona football to close it off. All right, um, with Dino Bay, I'll. 
let's talk. I want to talk the offensive coordinator and then the defensive coordinator here for a minute. With I like Dino Babers. I, um, Dino Babers, when he was here at the U of A in the past, I thought was fantastic. I'm all I'm gonna be curious though to see what Dino can Dino can do because Dino has a loaded offense at his disposal. This is an offense that should really be one of the handful of best offenses in the entire country. Not only should it be one of the best offenses in the entire country, it should be a offense that is able to an offense that is able to really, you know, do what it really wants to. It's got a great should have a great passing game, should have a really good running game. The O-line up front should be solid. This should be a very very good offense for the University of Arizona. Um, it's going to be interesting to see what Dino Babers can do with it, but we'll find out. Now, defensively, I have all faith in Dwayne Aquina. I am ecstatic that Brent Brennan hired Dwayne Aquina as the defensive coordinator. You go to practices, and Dwayne Aquina is – Dwayne Aquina probably has more energy out there than about any any coach that you will find. He is a uh, he is a marvel, and you can just tell that he loves doing there. and. I think that this defense is going to be a little bit more aggressive this year. At the end of the season, I liked, uh, you know, you obviously had to feel fairly good about Arizona. Most of the time, obviously, the, the uh, Oklahoma game wasn't great, but they forced a lot of turnovers, so you were able to get a win there. But be that as it may, defensively, Arizona, I think, is going to be a little bit more aggressive. And you, but you still got to be able to uh, figure out some uh, there. You still got some position holes on this team. Takario Davis is obviously fantastic at one of those cornerback spots, but you got to be able to get another player in there, in my opinion, opposite him, because as good as Takario Davis is, you know, you got a lot of unproven players out there. You know, you're talking about a G7, somebody, you know, like that. But what made Arizona really good last year is that they had two real lockdowns, you know, Ephesians price sock. Uh, has moved on to Washington, obviously. So you got a, a spot there. Then, like I said, you got to get more. I think you got to get more depth on the D line. But overall, this is going to be a. I think this is going to be a pretty good defense. And I'm. I just. I. I'm going to love watching Dwayne Aquina, and just kind of see where exactly things or things reside. You watch. Um. And Brent Brennan's going to be far more of a CEO type. He's going to. Uh, you know, he'll be involved with the offense. He'll be involved with the defense. But this is going to be a uh, this is going to be a fun team to be able to watch, and I think defensively they should be solid. And there might be a few growing pains here or there. And while again they might not have some of the top end talent that uh, last year's team had, it or at least top end depth. How about that? I think that statistically they should be one of the better units in the Big Twelve, and it's going to be fun to watch them and watch them kind of traverse that and everything that does go on with the Big Twelve. So we'll find that one out as well. All right, um, now. Tomorrow we are, or excuse me, uh, next week we should have a ton more. We should have a little bit more clarity when it comes to, uh, you know, transfer portal names for the U of A that they're kind of all in on, that they're really looking at. And uh, we'll have more uh, football practice updates as well. But again, you got two good programs here at Arizona. Arizona's got the best fan base going. And we will continue to enjoy all of that as we should because we deserve good things at the U of A. Just like we embrace the heartbreak, we should embrace the good things as well. But you all have a great rest of your day and, and have a great and safe weekend. And we will be back with you on Monday. As always, bear down, back the A, and thanks for making Locked on Wildcats your first listen of the day.